Uninvited is a 1988 horror film from director Graydon Clark. This could very well be one of the greatest B-movies ever made. The movie opens in this office building slash secret genetic research facility. Is this Clamp Enterprises? Some scientists have been doing evil experiments on cats and found something unusual with one of them. It must be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. Hey, Doc, uh, what are you going to do with that? The cat wants none of this nonsense, so she takes off. Have these guys ever handled a cat before? Why did they leave the door wide open? Some guys in hazmat suits are chasing the cat. This is what it looks like every time I have to take my cat to the vet. They shoot her with a tranquilizer, and this happens. The cat has another cat living inside of it that comes out and kills when threatened. The cat escapes into the parking garage, and now the doctors try to seal off the building. Shouldn't that have been the first thing they did? It's the worst hairball I've ever seen. The cat kills the guards, the doctors, and manages to unscrew the vent cover to escape. Over at the Waldorf Astoria, two mall chicks, Bobby and Suzanne, are trying to find a place to stay for spring break. Looks like they lost a fight with a weed whacker. One of the hotel staff is trying to throw the girls out, but multimillionaire Walter Graham offers to let them stay with him in exchange for unlimited mustache rides. Don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera, shit, looked at the camera. Mike and Albert, the elderly enforcers, show up to take Graham to a meeting. Graham tells the girls he'll send a limo for them to take them to his yacht. I'm sure he has nothing deviant in mind. Not at all. Goodbye, Mr. Graham. Oh, please, call me Walter. On Graham's yacht, Graham's having a meeting with Perkins so he doesn't turn them into the FCC? SEC? I can't tell which one he's saying. You, know, you guys don't know what it's like to fight the SEC. He gives him $3 million in hush money, but Perkins won't take it. Are you sure you haven't talked to anybody yet? No, I haven't. Have you told anybody about my comb over? It's not noticeable, is it? And where the hell is Nordberg? Graham doesn't want Perkins to snitch, so Albert drowns him. Maybe you should hire henchmen a little younger so they won't have heart attacks on the job. Mike, look at Albert. Look, look at him. He's going to be sick. I, I... A gas station attendant befriends the cat. Things are going well until he gets robbed and killed. Aw, you fucked with the wrong cat, Crocodile Dundee. Toon says, no! You can totally see the puppeteer's arm here. Meanwhile... Corey and Lance are hanging around the marina looking for girls. Nothing excites a woman more than a guy wearing the same shorts as her father. The girls see the guys and head over. Oh man, what are we gonna do? Let's try to look bored. Do what I do. Pop your collar. Look like a douche. Their friend Hedgeworth shows up, and the girls tell them about the guy they met last night. Last night we met this guy, Walter Graham. He's got this great big- Whoa, ladies! Corey knows about Wall Street Walter Graham and is excited to meet him. Walter's taking the girls on his yacht to the Caribbean, and they want them to come along. This seems like a terrible idea. They're asking three guys they met five minutes ago to protect them from the guy that they met last night. The gang's headed to the yacht when they hear Hellcat. Starved? Lady, that is one well-fed cat. Also, how the hell did she get in there? She was here, and then here, and then here? They find the lab tag, and Suzanne decides to keep the cat and give her a good home. After she takes it on a long boat ride to the Caribbean, Graham's talking to Rachel, the boat captain. Graham's upset the girls brought the guys on board and tries to get rid of them. Albert tells him the SEC is coming to search the boat. You've got three able-bodied men here, plus Suzanne and I can help. That's crewmen that you don't even have to pay. Besides, we'll all have some fun. What do you say? Yeah, let's help the guy with the criminal activity in exchange for a free boat ride. The guys go inside to see the remains of a previous party. You know what this movie needs? More cat noises. It was. I told you nobody gets sick on yachts. The girls put on some dance music. Mike comes in to put a damper on the fun and give everybody jobs. Graham needs to get to the Cayman Islands to get his money out of the bank before it's seized. Shouldn't he have an accountant that can do that without him having to go there in person? The cat escapes to the bowels of the ship. (coughs) 
Albert messes with the controls, which pisses off the cat, so she damages the engine. The girls come in to convince the guys that they made the right decision going on the trip with them. It's all fine and good for Lance and Corey, but what about poor Hedgeworth? While Albert's steering the boat, he gets bored and decides to get drunk. That night, Graham's throwing a party. Suzanne's about to say something, but they turn off her mic. So then he turns to me and he says, I'll give you a- Hey girls, you know that poor starving cat you brought on board? Maybe you should feed the little fella. Is this cat a ventriloquist? <laughs> <laughs> Graham's upset that Rachel's talking to Hedgeworth. He really knows how to sweet talk the ladies. Hmm? Why? He has brains. Brains? What would you know about brains? You are such a dumb bra. Hey, wait a sec. It's time for more awful dancing. Rachel finds Albert drunk and has steered them way off course. Albert goes outside and finds the cat in a storage container. How does she keep getting into these things? <laughs> My god, how long is this song? Mike hears Albert fall overboard and tells Graham. They decide to keep going rather than stop to check if he survived. The girls are relaxing and Graham is not so subtly spying on them. Rachel tells Graham there's something wrong with the engine and they have to stop. She finds Albert's blood and figures he must have drunkenly stumbled overboard. Rachel walks away from the mic and loses part of her audio. I had a feeling this was going to be a bad one. Hey, you want to do a second take? Nah. Rachel tries to get Graham to turn the boat around to look for Albert, and Mike shows some compassion. It's a shame about Albert. I liked him. Yeah, well, he's shark bait now. Rachel's been trying to buy the yacht from Graham to start a charter business. Graham offers to give her the boat if they keep going. I think Graham switched from spying on the girls to spying on the cat. Graham is ogling Bobby, just in case you were wondering if the cat was in the room or not. You know, when I get this tub to where we're going, it's gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna tell you, Bobby, you sure are one hell of a good looking woman. Graham gets a little too friendly with Bobby, so Lance tries to stop him, but Mike shoots him. Corey tries to stop Mike. This could be the least convincing kick I've ever seen. Hellcat has had it with these stupid humans and chews Mike's ankle off. Rachel and Suzanne try to call for help, but Graham shoots the radio. Rachel gets Graham to drop the gun and they take him prisoner. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Mike has poison cat venom coursing through his veins, which seems fairly unpleasant. Hedgeworth explains his theory about the cat. This was a mutation. There's a great deal of experimentation on lab animals. Maybe somehow this cat system has got some type of uh, experimental chemical in it. I'm thinking it's probably acid indigestion. You've got a ticket on the Heartburn Express. Dum, da, dum, dum. Oh, muscle spasm. I hate those. Mike's body are multiplying at a phenomenal rate. Mike's body are multiplying at a phenomenal rate. Hey everyone, get real close to the guy who looks like he's about to explode. Mike dies a horrible death, so they chuck him overboard to poison all the fish unfortunate enough to eat him. Corey and Rachel lock Graham up in his room. Rachel and Hedgeworth are trying to fix the engine. What happened to the audio here? Rachel. Hedgeworth finds some food the cat's been eating and figures that any food she comes in contact with becomes poisoned. He's a first year biology student, it must be true. Suzanne hears the cat. Oh no. Go away, please. All right, seriously? Yeah, how stupid is she? She has no idea that this wasn't the cat, especially after several hours of this. <coughs> Corey's making a pass at Suzanne. As a matter of fact, uh, I would feel better with a big, strong man here to protect me. So if you find one that's not wearing a pink shirt, could you send him in here? Rachel's trying to start the engine. All right, what's wrong with the audio now? Damn it, you think we find something out here? The engine doesn't work, but whatever she did, fix the sound. Damn it, I just don't have the parts. I just, I just can't keep- Doing the best you can. Bobby's trying to take Lance's mind off his gunshot wound. Here, let me take a look at that boo-boo. <laughs> 
Since Lance is poisoned, he kills himself by jumping overboard and somehow pulls Bobby with him. Suzanne cranks up the knob on the overacting to 11. You're lying. You're both lying! We're never going to get out of this alive. We're all going to die. <laughs> that thing's going to bite us. And we're all going to die a horrible death. Uh. Corey convinces Rachel to let Graham loose so he can help him look for the cat while they fix the engine. They're leaving poisoned food out for the cat. Listen, that thing could jump out from anywhere. Let me have a gun. Look, son, do you trust me? Don't you? Let me have the gun. Yeah. Yeah, I trust you, Mr. Graham. Why wouldn't you keep the gun and give him the food? I really hope he shoots you. Wasn't the whole reason they let Graham out so they could look for the cat in pairs? If so, why is he now alone? He finds the cat and shoots some holes in the ship. He accidentally blows up the radiator, which kills him. I'm pretty sure the cat's laughing at him. The cat got into the food storage and poisons it all. Suzanne eats some of the contaminated food, and bad things happen. Well, that didn't take very much. And here is officially when the film stopped trying. A toy boat. Since Corey shot a hole in the boat, it's sinking. Graham goes to get his money. How is there more water in his room than there is right by the hole? He tries to get the last briefcase, but is killed by the cat. Rachel and Martin escape on a lifeboat as the yacht sinks. Since the ending is not exciting enough, someone throws the cat puppet at him. They empty out a briefcase and toss it for the cat to float on, so she'll stop trying to get on their boat. Now the couple's rich, so Rachel can start her charter business, and Hedgeworth can... They get picked up by the Coast Guard and tell them their story, but they don't believe them. Meanwhile, in another part of the island, it's a black cat now? The movie was filmed mostly in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and on sound stages in Los Angeles, California. Director Graydon Clark started his career with mostly exploitation, like Black Shampoo and Satan's Cheerleaders. He moved on to the Jack Palance horror classic, Without Warning, and the video game version of Porky's, Joysticks. He wrote Uninvited and had high hopes for the film, but couldn't get a budget big enough to make it believable. Unfortunately, producers just didn't see a movie with a killer mutant cat on a boat as anything more than B-movie fare. He has a cameo in the beginning as one of the doctors that accidentally frees the cat. Sherry Shattuck played Suzanne, and this was one of her earlier films. She'll always have a special place in my heart as Catherine in Death Spa. Classic Western actor Clue Gulliger played Albert. He started out doing mostly cowboy TV shows like The Tall Man, where he played Billy the Kid. In the 80s, he moved on to horror films like Return of the Living Dead and The Hidden. His son, John Gulliger, won Project Greenlight 3 and went on to direct the Feast trilogy. Rob Estes played Corey. He's been in tons of TV shows like Melrose Place, but most people remember him from his run on the entertaining late night series Silk Stockings. This movie's a good time. Sure, the audio was bad. Looks like Albert fell overboard last night. What? Are you sure? We've looked everywhere. That's just awful. And the Foley thought that whenever the cat was around, they needed to add cat noises. But it had a lot of heart. Also, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but the cat totally wasn't the bad guy. Graham was. The cat only killed when threatened, and most likely would have left them alone if they would have fed her. She wasn't intentionally contaminating the food, she was just hungry. The cat killed Mike, who was trying to kill Lance, who was trying to stop Bobby from being raped. The cat's the hero, as far as I'm concerned. The movie really was just one awful decision after another, made by the humans. They were trying to make this a scary creature feature, but just didn't have the budget to afford a believable monster. Perhaps they would have had better luck going the Jaws route, where you don't see the monster until close to the end. The whole thing comes together as one of those magical disasters of the 80s. A unique concept matched with a small budget and low production values. Throw in an ultra pissed off George Kennedy and you have a gloriously entertaining mess of a film. We need the girls on board. Young broads are a pain in the ass. Old broads are a pain in the ass. but I'm not. Well, at least you're being consistent. You're being a dumb bitch. 
Hey, everyone, I just want to remind you, I have a Patreon set up. Uh, if you like the show and would like to help keep me going, even a dollar a month would make a difference. I would really appreciate it. I've got some cool rewards set up, so check it out. Thanks a lot.